Welcome to Farnham Park, my friends. Uh, there were some technical difficulties, and you missed seven runs from Tempest in the top of the first. Now the Honey Badgers will come to the plate, trailing by a score of 7-0. We do have the recording of everything, so we can put the game online for you after the fact, but we're picking action up here in the bottom of the first inning of the championship game. There's a pop fly foul and out of play. Strike one. This is Paul Sweeney. One ball and one strike. Paul Sweeney is the second baseman. Mark Griffin is pitching. Now Honey Badger's under immediate pressure here to try and uh, get at least close to the Tempest first inning. There's another pop fly fouling out of play. And that is strike three. So that's the first out, a very tough beginning for Paul Sweeney and the Honey Badgers. They find themselves down 7 nothing. Yeah, I think the pitcher will be happy he swung at that one. So Bobby Joe Payson now in the batter's box against Mark Griffin. And there's a hot shot to the shortstop. Throw to first is in time. Nice play by Alvarez, the shortstop, hurling Alvarez. A good recovery. I had time to let the ball hit the dirt, pick it, and make the throw. Luis Arviagos is the second baseman as the pitch is a ball to Kyle Wilson. That one's inside, two balls, no strikes. Zoe LaRue is playing first base. Give you the rest of the defensive linemen. There's a fly ball into right field, playable, and not caught, however. It was off the glove of the right fielder and on his way to second base. In there with a slide, Kyle Wilson. That fly ball was to Alexis Cruci in right field. No, excuse me, not Alexis Cruci. That's the other team. Yeah, I think that one, it just kind of caught, bit of caught up in the Linny wind Mitchell. And, and in the sun there. And just slight misjudgment. Tough when it's in the wind like that. And kind of caught her on the body and, and went away from her there. And that will bring up Alexis Cruzy. And she hits a fly ball to left field. The wind is tearing, taking that one back towards the fence. But the catch is made for the final out of the inning. Catch being made by Amilcar Gomez in left. So a very quick bottom of the inning. We go to the second inning. It is 7-0 Tempest. We are ready for the top of the second inning. Tempest leading by a score of seven to nothing. And we have a pinch hitter right away. Well, this, is the, this is the pitcher. Uh, Mark Griffin, right, that's right, it was Wadeson who made the last out. Thank you, Sarah. Well, we're, we're really flying by the seat of our pants here. I have got an advantage that I do play against them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mark Griffin. Takes a strike. Griffin and then Agostini. It's a 12-person batting order for Tempest. And Griffin now will take a walk. Excellent patient lead off there from Mark. And he gets to go to second base on that. And now the 12th hitter in the order, Emma Agostini. And she looks at a ball. John Irving working with Sunshine Santos, who's catching the third baseman, Debs Wilson. There's a fly ball deep into left center field. The wind blows it, and it goes over the head of Spencer in left center field. And coming around third to score 
is Griffin heading all the way to third base on that play. Emma Agostini. Fantastic shot there. Up in the sun and in the breeze. It is eight to nothing Tempest here in the top of the second inning. That was Bobby Joe Payson, by the way, in left field. Excuse me for misnaming some of the players. There's a ground ball right side, and it squirts through, and that will lead to another run. As the Honey Badgers having some issues defensively on that one, it got past Chelsea Kohler and Paul Sweeney. A little seeing eye ground ball. Yeah, those that's a good enough shot in that situation. Plenty of bounce on it right between the fielders. And sometimes when one person is, ex is expecting the other to get to it and then the ball deflects ever so slightly. You Tem don't always need, always need to get a lot of pace on it. If you can get it exactly between the two, that's, that's a tough play. Zoe LaRue is the hitter. She took a ball from John Irving. That pitch is too deep. Two balls, no strikes. Luis Araviago is on deck. He had a home run his first time, which you didn't see live, but trust me, you will be able to see it. I have the recording. So we will upload that to YouTube after the fact so you can see the entire thing. There's a fly ball. Right center field, the catch is made by Colin McNichol. That Good is the first out. Yeah. Center right, excellent move. Read that very well. And the Honey Badgers really do want to make inroads here in order to give themselves a chance. They don't, really don't want the Tempest adding to their score too much at this point. Yeah, the mercy rule, I believe, as Bob explained, is 20 after three. If I have that correct, after four. 15, 20 after four. There's a ground ball fair down the third base line. Base hit for Araviagos, and it rolls around in the corner. That will score a run. Araviagos is on his way to third. The throw there, not in time. Another run. It's 10 nothing. Araviagos has a home run and a triple. Those are the two hardest parts of the cycle to get. Howes comes around and scores. And now Monica Persson will step up to the plate. Here comes Monica, one of their best, best, most consistent batters. And that's a strike, nothing in one. Well, it's been pretty relentless so far in the early going. There's a ground ball to the right side, fielded by the second baseman. Paul Sweeney throws to first, but a run scores. Error there from the and first baseman, unfortunately. Yeah, so Persson is safe. Let's look at that. As the score is now 11 0. The throw just getting away from the first baseman, Kohler. And now Hurling Alvarez. 11 0 Tempest. The winner of this game will be promoted to the NSL 1. No, no, actually, this is. Um, this, uh this one, there's no promotion involved in this. The NSL this is League is, is the promotion. Right. So that's already been decided. Uh, okay. Um, this is, uh, yeah, for the glory, basically. For the glory. Well, yeah. I'm glad you're here to <laughs> clear <laughs> that up. Pitch was a strike to Hurling Alvarez. High fly ball, left field. Kyle Wilson is under it, and he makes the catch. Runner tags from first and will head to second base. That's very good base running from Prasan. That was a good catch there because that was up there for a very long time. And with the wind blowing as strong as it is, you basically always have to be ready to keep going back. Yeah. And so now Persson is at second base with two outs for Haley McTeer. That pitch is a bit too flat. One ball and no strikes. After this, it will be the NSL 1 championship game. There's a pop fly foul out of play. One ball, one strike. I would expect her at this point to be looking. There's nobody, on, no runner on one. I would be expecting her to look at, to put this firmly to left field, right into the sun and into the wind. In case you're wondering why you missed the first half inning of this ball game, don't fret. I have the recording and we will upload it to YouTube for you to see. There were a bunch of home runs in that inning, so you're going to want to go back and watch that. There's a ground ball back to the circle. Irving fields and somewhat dejectedly throws it to first for the final out. But it's 11-0 Tempest as we go to the bottom of the second inning here from Farnham Park.
Baseball Outlet is BSUK's preferred equipment partner for all your baseball and softball equipment needs. Visit baseballoutlet.co.uk and they'll get you and your team sorted. Welcome back to Farnham Park. Tempest and the Honey Badgers here in the NSL 2 championship game. Tempest leading 11-0, and it will be Tyler Spencer leading things off against Mark Griffin, and that pitch is a strike. Spencer and then Debs Wilson and then John Irving. And the Honey Badgers, we really looking to put something on the board in this inning. Yeah, they have to climb their way back into this one. We've seen comebacks from deficits like this before in this league, of course. It's early days. And the pitch on the way. That's a high fly ball to right center field. Two outfielders converging and it is caught. That was caught by Prasan and she caught it in right center field, but she's the left center fielder. So it was a little confusing. But the first out, nice she play by Monica. She doesn't mess around, she's quick. That's an important first out. So in fact, Debs Wilson will step up to the plate now. She's playing third base for the Honey Badgers. First pitch was a strike, nothing in one. One ball, one strike. Not too many left-hand pitchers in this tournament. I think Griffin is the only one I've seen. There's a hot shot to the right side. Nice pick by the second baseman. Ari Viagos, and he completes the play to first. That's the second out. She hit that hard on the ground, but I think in that situation probably it would be preferable to go to left field. You're making your life a little bit harder if you're going near to where you're running. Now looking around at the, the infield defense for Tempest, it appears to be quite strong. As John Irving, the opposing pitcher, steps up and has to step out of the way of that first offering. Well, late in the afternoon, the sun does become an issue on the left side of this field. Um, as batting team, I'll be looking to utilize that. Yeah, we saw a few outfielders in the last game struggle with the sun. That pitch is inside. Two balls, no strikes. And now the count, three balls, no strikes. There are two outs, nobody on base. Bottom of the second inning, 11-0 Tempest leading Honey Badgers. The top of the first inning that you missed, you will get to see later. I have to upload it. I had the recording, but the stream wasn't on. There's a comebacker knocked down by Griffin. He finds the ball, bounces it to first, in time for the out. A lot of moving parts on that play, but it was nicely completed. Very nice pick up from first base there. First of all, a defensive stop, <laughs> as that ball was hit very hard right back to the pitcher's circle. He did well to get a glove on that and make and it playable as well. So we'll go to the third inning, 11 nothing Tempest here at Farnham Park. Hit the Pitch is Baseball Softball UK's national softball participation program and a great way to bring your organization closer together. Whether you want a single day of softball fun or want to set up a league of your own, BSUK's staff and resources are here to help. For more information, visit hitthepitch.com. We go to the top of the third inning, Tempest leading by a score of 11 to nothing over the Honey Badgers. They will send Jordan Colton, Lenny Mitchell, and Becky Wadeson, now excuse me, Jordan Colton, Lenny Mitchell, and Emilcar Gomez to the plate. That pitch is a strike to Lenny Mitchell.
Count two and one on Lenny Mitchell. Having a few technical issues with the stream here. So my apologies. There's a fly ball, left center field. And this is going to go over the head of everybody and go all the way to the wall. Colton racing around third, being waved home. He is going to score. Mitchell is on her way to third with a triple. And that makes it 12-0 Tempest. Wow, that was huge. Uh, she really hit that ball very hard. It sailed over the head of Bobby Joe Payson and Colin McNichol in left and right center field, respectively, and went all the way to the fence. It was a solid contact. And now Emil Carr Gomez with Mitchell on third. Let's see if he goes for that, uh, that home run on the left side again. I think at this point, Tempest will probably be feeling fairly relaxed about swinging for the fences a bit, not worrying too much about placement. Uh, you, when you have a 12 nothing lead, you can definitely... You can have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> Being aware, obviously, there's always the opportunity, but at this point in the game, it's, it's quite early days for the Honey Badgers to come back and hit you hard because they are capable of that. But the, the wider this gap becomes, then the more you got to start thinking about that mercy rule. Absolutely. It becomes tougher in, mentally for the Honey Badgers. That's a ground ball that hugs the line and goes all the way to the corner. That will be another run as Gomez pulls up at second base with a double. That makes it 13 nothing. Still nobody out in this inning. It's pretty relentless from Tempest at the moment. Yeah, it they must are. feel like that for the Tiny Badgers. It must feel like it's never going to end. They are hitting the ball very hard, and that, even that one not hit all that hard, but it landed on the chalk beyond the third base bag down the line. There's a strike to Becky Wadeson. Realize that there were some issues with the stream. I hope that it's been fixed. I tried to start it and stop it. I see in the chat somebody wrote that it's all good now. So my apologies. A little bit hectic. Here's a line drive in right center field. That's a base hit. Gomez is going to be held. He runs through the sign, though, and he's going to score without a throw. So that makes it 14-0. Good momentum coming around third then. I think it probably would have hurt more to stop. Wadeson stopped at first base with a single. Four consecutive hits in the inning, and now Mark Griffin. You know, this. we've seen a, a few lefty throwers, righty batters in this tournament, and Griffin is one of those. That's definitely the less common type of ball player. There's a hot shot on one hop to second. Step on second for one, the throw to first is not nearly in time. Probably should have tried to feed the shortstop to get the double play on that one. I think the second baseman slightly caught the shortstop napping there. Yeah. And uh, felt that the shortstop wasn't going to be there in time, so made that decision. And so Sweeney and Spencer couldn't get together to turn that double play, so the runner goes to first base. And there's a swing and a drive to left field. It's playable for Wilson. He makes the catch, fighting with the sun and the wind. He's doing a great job out there. Yeah, so Emma Agostini flies out. That's the second out. That's right, the defense defense has not really been the issue for the Honey Badgers. It's just the Tempest has been smacking the ball all over the park. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap. Yeah, sometimes you just have to go with it and, and allow them to run hot for a bit. Stick in there and wait until things change. There's David Howes. Fly ball down the right field line, trying to go that way, but it's out of play, strike one. Two outs in the inning after the three runs have scored. Runner on first base is Mark Griffin. There's a line drive, caught at third by Debs Wilson. Hit very hard. Very well read from Debs there. She saw that all the way. So three more runs for Tempest, and we will go to the bottom of the third. It's 14-0 here at Farnham Park. BSUK's Academy is designed to help young players turn the off-season into an opportunity to become better, stronger, and fitter athletes. With opportunities for both baseball and softball players, as well as elite players through the High Performance Academy, there's a program for all skill levels. Information about this year's Academy, as well as High Performance Academy tryouts, is coming soon on BSUK.com.
14-0 Tempest as we go to the bottom of the third inning. And the first pitch to Chelsea Kohler is in there for a strike. Kohler, Colin McNichol, and Sunshine Santos. And there's a line drive off the glove of Gritton. Griffin, it trickles to the right, and he calmly shovels it to first for the first out. 1-3 on the put out. He did well there again. That's twice. He's been hit back hard. Recovered well, made the out. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see the pitcher wearing a face mask. And, in fact, in the last couple games we did see that. But Griffin is not doing that. But he had quick reaction time on that as Colin McNichol steps up. McNichol, the right center fielder. This one lined and off the glove of the leaping shortstop Alvarez, and it trickles into left center field. That's a base hit for McNichol. That will give them a bit of a lift. I mean, they're a good batting team, Honey Badgers. They're in the final for a reason. They just, I think, need something to give them a little bit of a foothold, and then we could see a big change in this game. You can clearly see that it is a tough thing to get a ball through this infield as Sunshine Santos steps up to the plate. That pitch is a strike. Even that ball hit very hard, and uh, Alvarez nearly made the play. Line shot. This one is over Alvarez's head. A base hit into left center field. At least we think. The throw to second. Yes. Safe there. <laughs> Sometimes i got to stop myself from calling it too quickly. Those <laughs> force plays at second base on a hit to the outfield sometimes do happen. Umpiring and commentating. Yeah. <laughs> and now the top of the order, Paul Sweeney getting his second chance. He fouled out his first time. First and second, there's one out in the inning. Honey Badger's trying to string some hits together here. I think we'll see better from Paul here. That's line into right center field. The Ball is off the glove of Colton, and it trickles away. Everybody's safe. Coming around third to score is Colin McNichol. Santos goes to second. Sweeney is at first, and that makes it a 14-1 game as the Honey Badgers have finally dented home plate. That always feels good. I should give them a lift here. They've got runners on one and two. And they've got two, three, four in their batting lineup coming up to the plate. Bobby Joe Payson steps up against Mark Griffin. And she smacks one in the air to left field, and it drops. And let's see the throw to third base. Not in time. Santos trips and stumbles but stays on the bag. Everybody moves up, and the bases are loaded for the number three hitter, Kyle Wilson. Nice aggressive at back there. It was also not a bad job by Amilcar Gomez in left field. He sort of deked it, made it look like he was going to catch, and that forced the runners to stay put for a moment. And... It was relatively close at third, even for a hit to that far into the outfield. He was just unlucky that the runner is particularly fast. Yeah. Wilson hits a fly ball to right center field, and it is caught. A nice shoestring catch. The runners from second and third tag up and move up. That means a run scores. That's a quality catch. Yeah, and good base running by Santos and Sweeney. Because if that ball falls in, they can both score anyway. Excellent catch by Jordan Colton in right center field. Two down in the inning, and now a runner at first base, Bobby Joe Payson. It is 14 to two. Yeah, Tempest doing their best to, to jump on this rally here from the Badgers. No, it's 14 to two. Paul Sweeney moved up to third, my apologies. I filled out my scorecard too quickly. That pitch is a ball. Sweeney is on third. Bobby Joe Payson is on first. Two outs in the inning. The pitch is a strike to Alexis Cruzy. And this ball is popped up. Foul territory. Will it stay in play? Oh, it's just over the fence and out of the reach just of Emma enough. Agostini. Just found enough of the fence there to give her another life. And I think a, a hit here for the Honey Badgers will be, will be quite important. You can see how Alexis Cruzy just stays alive. That ball out of the reach of Agostini at third. And there's a ground ball to the shortstop. And he makes the play at second, throws to first. Didn't need to do it. There were two outs anyway. But Cruzy grounds out to, the, to end the inning. Nice play by Hurling Alvarez to end the inning. But two runs do cross for the Honey Badgers. We go to the fourth inning. It is 14-2 Tempest. 
Baseball Softball UK's popular Baseball's Coming Home t-shirts are now available online and at Farnham Park. Visit BaseballSoftballUK.com and click the home page box or visit Home Plate Bar and Kitchen at Farnham to get yours today. To the top of the fourth inning, Tim Collins and Sarah Vertigan with you. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Once again, if you missed the top of the first inning, which you did because it wasn't broadcast, I have the recording. You will see a bunch of home runs and the seven runs that Tempest put on the board to start the game. That'll all have to be uploaded later on tonight. Meanwhile, Zoe LaRue will step up against John Irving. LaRue takes a strike, followed by Luis Arriviagos and Monica Persson. Two, three, and four in the order for Tempest. This ball has popped up right center field, and the catch is made by Colin McNichol as he reaches out with the outstretched glove as he was hustling across the outfield there. One down. Making up a lot of ground already here and in the center field. Important catch there. Yeah, I mean, and the wind has been sort of starting and stopping without any kind of warning. There's a line drive in the left field, base hit for Ari Viagos. He's rounding first, headed to second base, and he will stop there safely. Yeah, taking an extra base on the slight fumble there from left field, and he will always be looking for that, ready to take that extra base. Now you can see that Tempest, they're an aggressive base running team. They also really know how to draw throws. They know how to run the bases. That pitches a ball outside to Monica Persson. Arriviagos at second base. There's a ground ball back to the circle. Irving tries the fake, but Arriviagos is planted at second base. He does make the play to first, however, and there are two down. If Holly Badgers can hold on to ten, um, then it's going to make a big difference. My apologies. Hit the wrong button there, Sarah. <laughs> You're, you're, you're right about that. You know, Arviagos uh, and Tempest, they want to put a bunch of runs up on the board and try to invoke that mercy rule as Hurling Alvarez steps up and looks at ball one and ball two. Yeah, I think everybody would like to see a longer game than that here. Tempest scored seven in the first, four in the second, three in the third. None so far here in the fourth. There's a strike, two and one the count now on Alvarez. Irving's pitch, ground ball to short. The throw to first base is dropped and everybody's safe, first and third. But I think they probably would have had Alvarez as uh, Tyler Spencer bobbled it initially and then the throw to first, Casey, uh, Chelsea Kohler couldn't quite scoop it cleanly and that allows Alvarez to reach. So first and third yeah, for Haley McTeer. He'd beaten that throw anyway, but she had kept it in front of her. And this ball fouled to the right. Strike one on Haley McTeer. Sounds like that wind's picked up again. Yep. That's a strike. Strike two. Two down in the inning. First to third. That's way outside. There's a line shot to right field to base it for McTeer. That will bring home a run. Alvarez stops at second base. That makes it 15 to two. Very, very hard to stop a, a team when, particularly when the women are hitting like this. Yeah, that was a very hard hit ball and it was placed perfectly. There was no way that Colin McNichol or Paul Sweeney could get to either of those and now Jordan Colton steps up to the plate with two runners on and two outs. And there's a hard ground ball and it's past the shortstop into the outfield. Hurling Alvarez is going to score. The ball goes all the way to the fence and then caroms around there. McTeer is gonna score. Colton is gonna end up at third base. And that makes it 17 to two. And now we have a 15 run lead. We're in the fourth inning. So there is certainly a possibility 
And I think the Honey Badgers really want to try and end it here as quickly the as they can. 10 overall, yeah. Give themselves a chance. There's always a chance. And now Lenny Mitchell with Colton at third base. That pitch is a ball. Ball two. That's a strike. Two balls, one strike on Lenny Mitchell. And she lines it into right center field. That's a base hit. That will bring home the 18th run as Jordan Colton touches home plate. RBI single for Lenny Mitchell. That's impressive hitting from Tempest. I mean, they're hitting anything, whatever he throws. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said before, it has not been a question of defense for the Honey Badgers. The Tempest, they are just hitting every pitch, and they're being able to They've been able to place it in the spots where there are no defenders. That pitch is a strike to Amilcar Gomez. Yeah, Honey Badgers haven't had a lot of opportunities to make outs. Irving ahead 0-2. Line drive, left field, that's down for another base hit. Boy, this is all with two outs. That's five consecutive hits with two outs. And now Becky Wadeson. It's pretty tough to be on the end of this when a team is running this hot. Uh, there's not, not a lot you can do about it. Hope for a slight change and, uh, and uh, pick up on your own game. Oh, Becky Waitson is the hitter. And the pitch is a strike. And the next pitch is a strike. Well, a lot of strikes coming from Irving, who's just landed in there. And a ground ball sharply hit, and a diving stop by the shortstop. And he did not win the foot race of the bag. Everybody is safe. It was very close at second. Spencer made an excellent play just to keep that ball on the infield. However, the bases are now loaded. That looked a little harsh on the shortstop there. I, I actually personally, I thought he made it, and it was a great play. Now the umpire right there, very close to the play. And now Griffin smacks one down the right field line. Will it stay fair? Yes, it will. One run is in. Two runs are in. And that's a two-run single. Well, when it's not going your way. And when it rains, it pours, right? Yeah, always somebody comes up with a big hit after a, after a play like that. 20 to 2. Do I have that right? I <laughs> did. That pitch is a strike. Let's see, how many runs scored this inning? One, two, three, four, five, six runs have scored. There's a ground ball, and another run is going to score. They don't look like stopping Tempest at this point. <laughs> they're, they're on a real high. Base it through the middle off the bat of Emma Agostini. Griffin goes to second base, and now back to the top of the order. Well, when you have a 12-person batting order and you still bat around in an inning, you know you've been doing some damage, as David Howes will step up to the plate. There's a reason they're batting all 12 of their batters, and now we're seeing why. Yeah. And uh, Honey Badgers are a good team. Yeah. This is no reflection on them. Another masterful hit. This one is down into right field. Griffin is being waved around third, heading to the plate, and he will score without a throw. Base hit. I, don't, I think it's a while since I've just seen the display of relentless baseless, uh, base hitting quite this quality. And so Agostini is at third. And by my count, it's 22 to 2. And now Zoe LaRue takes the ball. One ball, no strikes. Sorry. That's inside. Two balls, no strikes. I would think that at this point, um, all the Tempest batters are feeling like they can't really miss. Well, it was 14 to 2 coming into this inning. And it is indeed 22 to 2. Sometimes it's tricky to keep track of all the messiness on the scorecard. But a 20 run lead. So that means after three more outs in this inning, there's strike two, that this game would end if Honey Badgers do not shorten the deficit. That would invoke the mercy rule. That pitch did not count as time had been called. And strike three is called. Oh, good job. Well, the inning will end. 
but it's quite an inning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight runs for Tempest. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. 22 to two is the score. We're live at Farnham Park. Welcome back to Farnham Park. Tempest leading by a score of 22 to two. So the Honey Badger is gonna try to, well, I guess they're gonna try to rally. <laughs> a, One run would do here to keep yeah. things alive. And they, they, they can do that. Tyler Spencer will lead things off against Mark Griffin. And the pitch is inside. Doing the right thing, staying patient at the plate despite the situation. Three balls and no strikes to count. Spencer, the number five in the order. A walk here would be massive. That's a strike, three and one. Of course, Mark Griffin absolutely does not want to give up a walk. Well, he does so, there all four. And Spencer will walk and go all the way to second base. In a stressful situation, that's, that's a big at bat. And you have to figure with a 20 run lead that Griffin is just trying to lay it in there. And oh yeah, just getting swinging. You know they would love to end it after this half inning if they could. If they don't, if Badgers are able to put a run on the board, we would play at least one more inning, but then it's 15 after five, so they would still have to rally. The first pitch was a strike to Debs Wilson. This ball is driven to deep left center field. The catch is made out there by Monica Persson. Good play, that's the first out. Shame there, because any single would have scored the runner there. He's fast. They'll That's be looking true. to just put this one run across the plate and then build from there. John Irving will step up to the plate. Now we're going to have a pinch hitter. This is not John Irving. This is... Number 33. Yeah, number 33, whatever his name is. We'll, we'll call him that. <laughs> Who is 33? All right, so Sam Steele is going to pinch hit for John Irving. And the pitch is a strike. This is a good substitution here. Excellent hitter, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so even with a score of 22 to two, they're all having a good time out there. There's a high pop-up, shallow right center field, and the catch made by the second baseman, Ari Viagos. And there are two down if Mark Griffin can get this next out without a run scoring, that would be the ball game. And then the only thing we'd have left today would be to settle the championship of the NSL one. That game's scheduled for 5 p.m. Yeah, I've got Sam with the commentator's curse there. Apologies. <laughs> and pitches a strike to Chelsea Kohler. Excellent pitching performance for Mark Griffin. He's only allowed two runs. He's been very solid. And strike two. He's really been able to deal with the wind and the sun and throw pitches in there for a strike. That one is outside. One ball, two strikes. She needs to be aggressive here. She might as well. Yeah, you don't want to get called out on strikes and the game, that's for sure. Runner at second base. It's a ball, ball two. Two balls, two strikes. And now a full count as Griffin lets that one go a little bit too low. And that is ball four. 
That's a well worked at bat there. And in that situation, Kohler goes to first base and stops, and that will bring up Colin McNichol. Excuse, oh. so he's going to be pinch hit for. Her. Tepi Ito is going to pinch hit for Colin McNichol. And the first pitch is a strike. He's got runners on one and two here. Let's see if he can bring in that crucial run. Swing and a miss. A little too anxious. Nothing in two. One strike away. Ito with a little laugh after that one. Mark Griffin's pitch. A fly ball deep to left field. It will stay in the park, and the catch is made by Gomez, and that is the ball game. Final score, the Tempest 22, the Honey Badgers 2. Well, you don't see that very often. That's comprehensive and an incredible batting display from Tempest there. Yeah, and once again, I would like to apologize that you missed the first half of the inning, uh, of the first inning. That will be uploaded to YouTube after the fact, because I have the recording of it. There were a lot of home runs in that half inning, so we'll have to upla upload that later. But please tune in in about 20 minutes' time, where we will have the NSL 1 championship game here on the Baseball Softball UK YouTube channel. My name's Tim Collins for Sarah Vertigan. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being with me, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. That was fun. You're going to stick around for the next game too, right? Uh, yeah, I might well do. If you can. If, you're, if you're I can, I will be here. All right. Well, thank you, and we hope you, the viewers, will also stick around for that. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back on the Baseball Softball UK YouTube channel. Final score once again, Tempest 22, the Honey Badgers 2.